David Linden. Thank you very much indeed, yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, as I was approaching this debate, I was reflecting uh, when I first stood for election in 2017, one of the first experiences I had, and it was going along to uh, Hustings. Um, and although Hustings seemed to be a kind of dying art in election campaigns, it's still a very important part of it. And I remember that evening being challenged by a guy in the audience about what my policy was, or my party's policy on immigration. And I remember giving a very full throated uh, argument in favour of immigration and why we need immigration. And after the, the hustings was over, he came up to me and he told me, uh, look, before the, the public meeting tonight, I was intending to vote for you, but because you're so pro-immigration, I can't vote for you. And I think it was probably uh, that experience that, that led me to kind of reflect on how we, we managed to come into this situation where immigration has become such a hotly contested issue. And there is an argument that during the, the Brexit referendum, um, the main political parties were absolutely absent when it came to leadership in this issue, because I believe that immigration is fundamentally a good thing. And I think yeah, the more yeah, the politicians yeah, yeah. talk about that, we would not be in this position. And there is a degree of hypocrisy when we speak to some of our constituents who, when they're talking about immigrants, that's people who come here from Europe. But when we talk about people going to live in Spain, they're expats. Yes, yeah. And people will complain that, oh, they don't speak our language when they're on the streets of Glasgow. But quite often when I go on holiday to Gran Canaria or Tenerife, I don't hear many British people speaking Spanish, so there is a degree of hypocrisy there. And on that issue of hypocrisy, I do want to address uh, very directly the issue of the, the absolute mess that the UK Labour Party found itself in this afternoon. We had the Shadow Home Secretary opening the debate saying that Labour would abstain. It took 135 miles for Jesus and Paul to walk the road to Damascus, but tonight it took an hour and 35 minutes for the Labour Party to U-turn their position. And I think, Madam Deputy Speaker, that shows the absolute nonsensical position that the, the, the opposition has found itself in. And it's the same with Brexit. If you find that you're trying to ride two horses, eventually those two horses will give way. Yep, yep, and what we saw yep, today yep. is the very beginning of that for them, and I think they should, they should reflect on that. But I think we've got to be very, very upfront about the benefits of immigration, um, because if we don't, we realise that there are major tra challenges coming down the track for us, not just in terms of our economy, our public services, but also that of social care. We know that the number of people uh, that are going to have dementia is going to increase by about 40 per cent in 12 years' time. That means more people in care homes. And the vast majority of people that I went to school with, and it's a sad thing, but the vast majority of people I went to school with don't like the idea of going to work in care homes, of, of wiping people's bottoms, of serving meals. And if we don't confront the reality of our ageing population, then we're going to be in a serious, serious problem when it comes to the current argument that we have on immigration. I'm very happy to give way. I think what I'm is making a very powerful point. And it's not simply the fact of providing the labour, it's also the taxes yes, that yep, these immigrants yes, will pay, yes. uh -huh. because I'm that is needed to fund the social services that yeah. so many people rely on. Absolutely. And he almost anticipates the next point that I, I was about to make, because we know that we have an ageing population, and we know <laughs> that those people are going to have to be looked after. We know that, that people are going to live longer as well, and therefore we need people to fund the tax base to pay the pension. So there is absolutely an econ economic argument to immigration as well. And as I was preparing for tonight, I reflected, you know, we, we begin the, the sitting day in the House of Commons with a prayer. Um, and one of the things that, that the Speaker's chapel leads us is, uh, she says, may they never lead the nation wrongly through love of power, desire to please or unworthy ideals, but laying aside all private interests and prejudice, uh, keep in mind the responsibility to seek to improve the condition of all mankind. Oh, man. So we stand here yeah. at half past two and we pray that to God. We, we say... Let us not take decisions just to please people, but do it for the right reasons. Yep. And in reality, we found ourselves in a position politically where we are not leading anymore, that we are reacting to public opinion. And so I don't make any apology for the fact that night at that hustings that I gave a very pro-immigration stance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why tonight, with a German surname, I will walk through that lobby and vote no to this bill, because I believe in free movement of people. And the sooner that people in this House got to grips with the challenges that are coming down the track and the benefits that come with freedom of movement, the better, because we have serious challenges and any vote to put this bill forward tonight would be a seriously retrograde step. Yeah.